Yo, what is up there guys? This is Adi, and today I'm going to be showing you how to soft mod your Wii so that you'll be able to play both Wii and GameCube games using a USB drive or an external hard drive instead of your discs. So I had made a tutorial a while back, but some people thought it was too hard to understand, so I'm basically redoing that and making a full version that shows you how to go from soft modding to being able to play. So. We're going to first need a few things before we start. The things we're going to need are obviously your Wii, but you're going to want a Wii with GameCube controller ports on it. It can be a white or black Wii, but just be careful if you're getting a black Wii to make sure it actually has the GC ports on top. Uh, the Revision 2 models of the black Wiis don't have GameCube ports, so just be aware of that when you're looking for those. You'll need your power cable, motion sensor bar, Wiimote, a GameCube controller, and I would suggest highly getting component cables instead of composite cables. Component cables are going to allow you to play the PAL region games in color. Otherwise, it's going to be black and white using composite. You're going to need an internet connection to connect your Wii to the internet. You're going to need a 2 gigabyte SD card, non-SDHC, and an SD card reader for your PC, whether it be like a USB reader or something. You're going to need your USB or an external hard drive, whatever you're going to use, with at least 4 gigabytes of space. Uh, it could be a 2.0 or a 3.0, it doesn't really matter, either works. And you're going to need the install files that I have for the SD card, you can find that in the video description below. Um, it's not necessary to have this, but I would recommend also having Skyward Sword, the disc uh, for the Wii. That's going to help us to update your Wii uh, fully. So. Let's get started. I have here a Wii that I have uh, bought at a used game store. It is uh, factory restored at this point. All I've done is uh, gone through the basic setup process where you know you choose the language, date and time, all that kind of stuff. And the only other thing I've done is gone into the Wii options, the Wii settings, and made it to where it's using a progressive scan for the um, resolution using 480p with my component cables here and I always keep my widescreen settings on 4x3 just because um, GameCube games uh, don't look good when they're <laughs> stretched out so um, yeah 4x3 is my recommended thing. Um, the only other thing I've done is also connected my uh, Wii to the internet using a wired connection. I've got a, a USB to Ethernet um, it's wired right now, so we're good to go. So the first thing you'll want to do is I'll just go back to the uh, main menu just so you're following me fully. So we've got the Wii options. So we're going to click on that. Go to Wii settings. Wait for this to load. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to update our Wii fully. So this is already on 4.3U, which is the most up to date, but there's probably some hidden updates that we're probably going to need. So, just go over to the third page and click on Wii System Update. Connect to the internet, yes please. Blah, blah, blah. It's gonna say, you know, if it's got um, unauthorized mods and blah, 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 it's gonna remove those. So that's why we want to update the Wii fully first because if it accidentally somehow <laughs> updates either through uh, the internet or a disc that has an update on it, like Skyward Sword, it may do some weird stuff uh, to your ways. So we're gonna go ahead and just update first. All right, so it says there are no dates available, so we're good there. The next thing we're gonna do though is put in Skyward Sword and it should have an update of some sort on it. Um, the last time I did this, it definitely did. So, I'm gonna grab the game and go ahead and put it in there. So we'll wait for it to load. And you can see when I put it in the disc, it already says Wii System Update. So it won't even let you play the game unless you have it. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. In order to use the software, you gotta update your Wii, cool, great. Once again, it's gonna get rid of unauthorized mods and such. So there we go.
All right, we has been updated. It's going to restart now. And now you can see it actually shows the game, so we're actually able to uh, play it if we want. Um, next, we're going to actually get the files that we need to be able to install the Homebrew channel. Um, but before we install the Homebrew channel, I want to talk about these channels right here. So if you're like me, you don't really use any of this, and this kind of just gets in the way. For me, I like to have it to where I have just the disk menu and then my Homebrew channel right next to it. So if you're like me and you want to uh, be OCD about what stuff looks like, one thing you can do is move these channels over to the next page. And in order to do that, if you hold down the B button on the back of the Wiimote, and then when you go to grab or you know, use a channel, it'll actually grab it if you hold down both A and B like this. And then you can actually just like throw it over here somewhere. So, uh, you know, this is where we'll put the uh, homebrew channel later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just move these. So just give me one second. All right. Now we're nice and tidy. I don't put it on the first row over here, or first column, just so I don't see them either. So that way it's just the uh, homebrew and the disk. So the next thing we're going to need is the MAC address from your console. And in order to get that, we're going to go into the Wii Options. We're going to go to Wii Settings. And while you're in the Settings menu, go ahead and check to make sure, you know, you've got version 4.3 and then Check what the letter is. U stands for US. There's three other letters it could be. It could be E, which means Europe or PAL. J, which is Japanese, and K, which is Korean. So uh, just note which one you've got and which region you're in. Next, we're gonna go over to Internet. Console information. And here you can see the MAC address. So I've got mine blocked out here just so you can't see it but uh, I'm going to note what that is and the next thing we're going to do is actually go to a website which I also have in the video description and it is please.hackme.com <laughs> so here is the website and uh, I'm going to click on 4.3u because that's what mine is um, you want to go ahead and put in your MAC address, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, and we're going to click on, make sure the bundle, the Hackme installer, is checked. Do the CAPTCHA. And it doesn't matter which one of these you click, just which one of them you're feeling that day, I'm going to do blue today. And you can see it downloads this letter bomb app. And this is what's going to be used to actually get you the homebrew channel. So, I'm going to grab that and put it on my desktop for you guys to see. So, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. So, here it is. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So you're gonna wanna take all of this and copy this to your SD card. I have my SD card already in here and I'm going to just open up a new window. So here's the SD card. I'm going to just paste all that good stuff in there. So this is what it should look like on the root of the SD card. So now what we can do is check the SD card. Let's go back to the Wii. We will go back to the main menu here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this SD card out of my computer and put it in the Wii. Okay. So, SD card is in the Wii. Now the next thing we want to do is go to your message board. And you want to check either before or after and see if there is a letter in here. And there it is. <laughs> so I went back one day and you can see I've got my letter bomb. So we're going to click on this. And you're gonna see some crazy stuff happen now. So, 
we're going to wait for this to load. It takes a bit. And eventually it's going to come up and it's going to say click one, which is one on the Wiimote, to continue. Okay, so that took about maybe 20 to 30 seconds. So I'm going to hit one. And you're going to come up with this fancy menu here. This is the Hack Me Installer. And the only thing we're wanting to do with this is install the Homebrew channel. There's going to be a couple other options in here. But anyways, we're going to hit continue. And using the D-pad, we're going to go up to install the Homebrew channel. Would you like to install it? Yes. And now we wait. And that was pretty quick. So <laughs> hit continue. And now we can exit. And it should boost right into the homebrew channel. And there it is. So this is what the homebrew channel looks like. You can pop these bubbles. Has, uh, you know, some fun stuff like that. Anyways, uh, to get out of this, you can hit the, uh, the home menu on the Wiimote. And it'll bring up a little system menu thing here. And uh, we can go exit to system menu. And this will bring us back into the actual Wii menu. All right, so you can see we've got the homebrew channel. And if we click on it, we get the cool homebrew music. I love that music so much. All right, if you hit start, it's going to take us back into the homebrew channel, which we were in a second ago. Um, inside the homebrew channel, if you actually hit one, it will give you another little option, and you can see... Um, if you have a USB device or a SD card, whichever one you want to read from, blah, 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 you can sort applications, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we've got this installed, we're going to be moving to part two of the video. So uh, that was the easy part. Now we're going to get into a couple more complicated things, um, but we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, we are on to part two of the video, and we're going to be actually installing some software that's going to allow us to play the games off the USB and do a couple other neat things. So, you should have the Humber channel installed at this point. I've removed Skyward Sword and the SD card from my Wii. Uh, what I'm going to do now is download the uh, SD card files that I have linked in the video description. Um, I don't really need to download them, they're on my desktop. Um, you can see right here. So I've quote unquote already unzipped it and have all the files right here. And this is what should be in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and insert my SD card. So here's my SD card. It has the letter bomb stuff still on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just shift delete, permanently delete those. So my SD card should have nothing on it. And at this point, open up that SD card homebrew install by me. Copy the stuff and paste over into the SD card. So we'll give that a second to copy and then we will place this SD card back into our Wii. Okay, now that that's copied, we can close out of that, go ahead and eject our SD card. All right, and we will go back to the Wii now and put in the SD card. All right, at this point, you'll want to go ahead and plug in your GameCube controller if you haven't already, because you may need it. We're going to go into the homebrew channel now. And what should be different now is you should see some apps in here. And there they are. Now, if they aren't showing up, press 1. Make sure that you're using the SD slot. If it's looking for their USB, it's not going to see it. Um, another thing I like to do is to sort these by pressing 2 
if you press two, it'll switch between like a list mode and a tile mode. I prefer the tile mode, it's just easier to see that way. So we're going to be installing three things and we need to do them in order. The first thing we are going to install is iOS 236. So you can see, there's. I'll show you the three things we're going to be installing are iOS 236, the D2X CIOS, and the CIOS 222 installer. Uh, the first one is going to be 236. So click on that and hit load. Okay, so it says press one to start. So we're going to hit one. And we should still be connected to the internet and that's what we want to use. So we want to actually download the iOS from in US. So we're going to click that. All right, so press A to start the install. All right, so at this point, you're gonna have an option. And you wanna be careful on what you pick because I have actually done this before to see what it'll do. I've modded plenty of ways at this point in my life and uh, I wanted to actually see what it would do if I said I was going to play pirated games. And uh, it's not fun to get your Wii back to where it can be used uh, if you click that. So, the <laughs> thing we want to click is 2 or Y on the GameCube controller if you have no need for piracy, because we are not pirates. And there you go. So now we can just hit A, and we will exit this screen. Alright, so that one is Dunsky. The next one we're going to do is the D2X iOS installer. So click on that and hit load. All right, so we want to just click A. All right, and for this part, we're going to have to select certain numbers using the D-pad. So the first thing we're going to install is the D2X V6 onto iOS 248 with a base of 56. So we want to go to D2X V6 for the first part. The iOS base, we're going to use the right on the D-pad to select 56. And then for the select say iOS, iOS slot is 248. Then we just hit A. Then we hit A again to install. And this will take a second to install. Okay, so that one's done. So we're going to hit continue. It'll take us back to the main menu. And be aware that all of this needs the internet, so just stay connected to the internet. Don't, you know, get off of there. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to do D2X V6 iOS 247 with a base of 57. So it's essentially the same thing. We just go over here, we're doing a base of 57, and then we're doing 247 for this slot right here. So once again, just hit A, hit A again, and it'll start to download and install the files. Alright, we'll just hit A to continue, and at this point we can actually leave, so just hit B to exit, and we'll go back to the Homebrew channel. Alright, and the last thing we're going to do is the CIOS 222 installer, so go ahead and load that up. All right, so at this point, we want to actually remove any GameCube controller or memory card that we have in the system, because it actually says to do that in the uh, install procedure text document for this particular app. Uh, so go ahead and do that. And the next thing we're going to want to do is select the iOS 236 with the D-pad. So at first, it's on iOS 249. 
We actually want to do 236. You can see I changed that by just pressing left on the D-pad up there at the top. Uh, so make sure you do that before actually pressing anything or you may install the wrong thing. So um, now we're going to hit A to continue. All right, and it's going to give us a few options. So the option we want is iOS 224 version 65535. So we want to go down to the bottom, the 224 one, and hit A. And it's going to ask us which iOS, and we want to do 37. So that's the one that's on. Hit A, and it's going to start to download. All right, now we press 1 to install. All right, so it is done. Just give it a second, don't really have to hit anything, and we're good to go. So at this point, what I like to do is actually delete those three, just so someone can't accidentally get on and uh, mess with your installer and actually you know do something bad to your Wii. So if you actually will click on it, hit delete, it'll delete it from the apps folder on the SD card. So let's do that with the three that we did. And this kind of just, uh, just makes it a little safer <laughs> to have the SD card in all the time. Uh, I don't want like someone to come around and mess with your settings. So this is what we should have. And at this point, we are ready to start going into the actual software and configuring it to play the games and such. It already has the, the software installed to look for uh, to be able to play the games on USB. Now we're going to actually configure it to find the games on the USB and play them using certain apps. So that'll be the part three of the video. All right, we are going into part three of this tutorial and I'm going to talk about the apps that we have left on the SD card. So from top left here we have USB Loader GX which is what we're going to be mainly focusing on in this part. Um, this is a piece of software that allows us to see the library of games that we have on our USB slash external hard drive and it also allows us to do what's called forwarding to either the Devolution or Nintendo uh, software that will allow us to actually play the games themselves. So this is more or less just like a uh, UI for us to be able to use in order to get into one of the actual players themselves. Uh, I'll talk about those. So Nintendo is the most common one you're going to see. Um, you're able to use ISOs that say if you downloaded an ISO from the internet or if you uh, straight ripped yours, you could put it on the USB drive and play it in this. You can actually go into Nintendo in itself if you wanted to do that, uh, but it's easier to go through USB Loader GX. It's more aesthetically pleasing and easier to navigate. Um, but this will play ISO straight up. Devolution, even though this doesn't say Devolution on it, that's what it's called. Um, and it also plays GameCube games. And uh, the difference with this, though, is say um, I downloaded an ISO off the internet and it was like Mario Sunshine. And, uh, you know, I go to play it, it's going to ask me to put in the disc. And this is for, like, piracy reasons. And it wants to confirm that you actually own the disc. So, even though I have a copy of Super Mario Sunshine, I do have a physical disc. If I were to try to put that disc in, it wouldn't work because it's not the same ISO from the exact same physical disc I, that I'm using. So, in order to do anything with Devolution... You have to 100% own the game, rip it yourself, and then put that same disc in to verify it once. And once you verified it, then you're good to go and it'll work forever after that. Um, the reason that anyone would want to use this is, for me personally, I use it for speedrunning. Um, it actually gives you faster loads and such. So certain communities will choose this over Nintendo uh, just because of you know faster loads and such. Nintendo is more or less uh, one that is a one-to-one -one when it comes to how the game plays and loads and stuff like that. So this will be like you're playing on the actual disc. This is more like a beefed-up, souped-up version of the game um, to play. So I gave you both of those so you can choose whichever one you want to use. CleanRip 
this is how you're going to rip your games. So for like Devolution, when you need the ISO, or if you just want to, you know, get the ISOs that you, you know, the games that you already have into ISO format and put them on your USB instead of having to download them, that's what you would use. Um, puts those on there for you. GCMM stands for GameCube Memory Manager. This will help you to, if you have a physical memory card, you can actually change that into a uh, digital format and use that inside of Devolution or Nintendo and not even have your memory card plugged into your Wii at all. You can just use a virtual version of it through this. Uh, this will like rip it into a raw format. You can take it into Dolphin on your computer, mess around with it, insert stuff. Um, a lot of times on GameCube, a uh, game that comes to mind for an example would be F-Zero GX. Um, if you try to copy someone's save data from one memory card to another, it actually won't let you. It'll say, I'm sorry, this uh, you know, memory, whatever, game save is not able to be copied. You're like, what? I want this on a different memory card. Well, if you rip your memory card that has that game save and you want to put it on a different one, you can actually rip this one, put it into Dolphin, uh, put in uh, another raw format that you want to another uh, memory card, put whatever saves you want onto it, like change, you know, saves, delete them, put more in, whatever. Take that raw format, put it back into GameCube Memory Manager, and then actually put it on your physical memory card if you wanted. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. Gecko is a software that allows you to play discs from other regions. So I'm using an NTSC Wii, which is North American. If I wanted to try and play a PAL version game or a Japanese version game, it's not going to work. But with Gecko, if I put in the disc and start De Gecko, it'll actually play it for me rather than, uh, you know, it'll say, like, the disc isn't readable if you were to just try and put it in the Wii normally. But with this, you're able to play it. And then Homebrew Browser is just a piece of software that lets you go through and uh, see new... Uh, software and download them so if you wanted like an emulator or other pieces of software to put on your Wii that I haven't included you can go in there and download more or you can just go online and find more stuff that you want and then put them on your SD card and you're good to go so let's go ahead and dive into USB loader GX and all of these I have updated to the newest versions so you should be good on that um, this is looking for my USB or external drive. We have not got to that part yet, so I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Okay. So right now it's looking for some images um, of games that was probably from my USB loader GX uh, the settings. Um, I should probably go in and delete that before I give you guys this. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. This is actually looking for... Um the channels so like the weather channel internet channel netflix you know the things that were on the wii themselves that's what this is <laughs> so usb loader not only looks for games it looks for any app so uh we can change that by going up here and this shows us uh what we're looking for so nan channels is what that is we're going to get rid of that and just make it have Wii and GameCube games. And there should be absolutely nothing because it's like, hey, you know, I don't see anything. So as of right now, it's just going to default to the NAND channels because there's literally nothing else for it to see. Um, it says we have 11 games, but the 11 games are just those channels. So that's what that is. But uh, this is what USB Loader GX looks like. There are themes and such you can download for it, but I highly suggest not using any themes, period no music, no anything. Uh, reason being, I had a really cool one that had like aquatic ambience, like a remix version of it. It's all black and blue. It looks sweet. And I could not get it to work with forwarders. It would not forward to Nintendo or Devolution correctly. And as soon as I removed the theme, it worked. And I just, I've just had troubles with themes, even though they're really cool. Sometimes they mess up stuff. So anywho, we've got a little uh, little UI up here that shows us, you know, we can list the games. Um, we can have them in this kind of format. We can have them like this. We can have them in tiles. My opinion, the best way to do it is to do this one right here. And on the D-pad, you can press up or down. And if there was more games here, you would be able to see it. I'll show you that later. But you can press down, and it'll show you, like, way more columns and rows. And it'll be like, you know hundreds of games that you can see at once so it's it's really really nice um anyways let's go into the settings here
But now that we've gone through that, let's actually get our USB slash hard drive, whatever you're going to use, ready. And um, then we'll come back and we'll actually load some of this. Um, so I'm going to click this, hit exit, and go back to just the homebrew channel for now. And we're going to look at actually getting a USB ready with some games on it. I'm going to go back to our desktop here. And you can see I've got a USB drive right here, which we're going to be using. And I'm going to show you how to format that and get the games on it, etc. And we also have, this is my current external hard drive I'm using. It's a two terabyte USB 3.0 Western Digital external hard drive that has all of my games, my saves, etc. on it. So you can look and see, I've got a lot of games on here. Um, it's like 491 games, I believe, something like that. But this is kind of the structure you're going to be using uh, for each game. So if we wanted to do something like, uh, we were talking about Super Mario Sunshine earlier. So right here, Super Mario Sunshine, you name it whatever you want the folder to be named. And then inside here, you're going to always name the game, just game.iso. That's it. If it has two discs, like for example, Resident Evil 4 has two discs, you'll have game.iso for the first disc, but disc two is literally called disc2.iso, and that's how it knows uh, which, which one is the second disc. And the way you swap that is just hitting the eject button on the Wii itself, and it'll like switch between the two discs on its own. It's pretty cool. Um, but this is how you would want it. You just make a folder name inside of on the root, just called games, whatever the game is called, and then game.iso and disc2.iso if it's got two discs. The only other thing they would really want would be these two. Um, apps is kind of the thing for devolution, and don't worry about this right now, but saves, this is where you would keep your memory card. Um, you want to call it ninmem dot raw and this way um nintendo will be able to see the memory card um so this is one that you can actually open inside of dolphin so if you open dolphin i'll show you kind of what uh what that looks like just real quick before we get into more of the usb stuff because this is probably the only thing i'm going to talk about when it comes to the memory card i'll let you guys kind of figure out what you want to do with your own memory cards and uh, getting that to work so it's loading over here on the other screen. Okay, so if you go into um, Tools, Memory Card Manager, it'll say, where do you want to go? You hit Browse, go look for that save, open it, and now you can see all the save data that I had on my memory card, and you can delete it, move it to a new memory card, um, Etc. Just whatever whatever you want to do with those saves. So that's how you would do that. And it's just inside of a folder called saves. Ninmem.raw. That's that's what you would do on the USB. The other one is WBFS, and this is where you keep your Wii games. So if you wanted to play like you know Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, Brawl, whatever, this is where you would put those. So we've got like the Metroid Prime trilogy here, and you just call it you know Metroid Prime trilogy. And then throw the .wbfs files in there. You're good to go. So this does not require having a Nintendo Devolution or any other player because this is a Wii game and you're on a Wii. So it'll just know, like, oh, hey, this is a, a Wii game inside of USB B Loader GX and it'll just immediately load it. So you're good to go with that. Um, so that's the kind of the structure we're going to be making. And now what we're going to do is we are going to actually get our uh, USB ready. So I'm opening up a new window here. And what we're going to be using to get this USB drive ready, this eight gig right here, is called Eases Partition Master uh, to be able to format this drive the way we need it to be. Uh, the reason I use this rather than like the Windows version is just because uh, the Windows version doesn't allow you to do more 
than like a eight gig drive. If it's like a, you know, 128 gig drive or like a terabyte external, it's not gonna let you change it to the format we need to. So I actually have this in the description as well. This is an older version of the Isis Partition Master. The new one, if you get like a trial of the new one, it doesn't let you really do anything. So we're going to extract this zip that I have for you guys. We're going to open it up and install it. And just hit next, accept. We don't really need any of this stuff. Uh, we don't want this. That doesn't matter. And then just let it install. Okay, launch it. Comes up with this right here, then just hit launch application. So it talks about how there's a newer version. We don't need that. All right, so this is what it looks like. So the disc that we're needing to do is E, it is an E gig drive. So if we look here, we've got this right here, which is it, the eight gig drive. And what we're going to want to do is get this to a FAT32, which this one already is, because I've used it before, but we want to get it to a FAT32. Uh, so if we right click on it, and we go to Format Partition, we can call it, um, we'll call it Wii USB Test. Oh, and it won't let us because it's too long, so we're gonna do that. Just all kind of one word. And we want FAT32, and then cluster size, we want to do 32 kilobytes. Hit OK. Locking the volume. OK, and you think, oh, it's done. It hasn't actually done it yet. It's just prepped it. It's like waiting for you to do it. So now you have to come up here and hit apply. And it's like one operation is currently building. Apply it. You're like, yes, just don't hit this or it'll change or it'll shut down your computer. Hit yes. And it's actually going to format the drive for you. So this window comes up, says it's been successfully completed, hit OK. It'll take a second, another box should pop up, maybe. I remember there being like a loading screen that happens or something. By the way, there it is. So it's updating the system information. It's it's checking to see what all drives there are again. And because we had just changed this to be called something different and then, you know, made it a different format, blah, blah, blah. That's why it's like recollecting the data to see what it was. So we're done with this. This thing's gonna still be up, so just get rid of that too. Um, and as you can see, we've got, if I refresh this, We've got the Wii USB test that we can start putting games inside. So let's go in here, make some new folders, one called games, uh, one called saves, one called WBFS. And let me make sure that we are good. Yep. Okay. So we've got that now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to eject this, and I'm going to show you how to use CleanRip. All right, so let's go back to the Wii. We're going to take the USB, and when you plug it in, make sure it's in port zero, which is actually the bottom port on the Wii. Um, I can show you a picture of that here while we're plugging this in. So we're going to, and I'm actually going to use the GameCube controller now that it's, we've got that plugged in. So you can use the GameCube controller 
with the D-pad to move around these boxes like this. You can't use the analog stick, but you can use the D-pad. So we're going to go to... Uh, let me go grab a game. We'll just do Sunshine since we keep talking about it. So let me grab that. I'm going to go ahead and put Sunshine into the Wii. And I'm going to click on Clean Rip. Hit Load. Comes up with a little disclaimer saying, you know, not responsible if it damages your discs and stuff. Hit A to continue. All right, please select the device type. So where do we want to save it? We want to save it on the USB. And then what's the file system type? Well, we just made it FAT32, so we're gonna hit FAT. It says insert a USB. Okay, I've already put it in, so we hit A. It should find it. So it's gonna come up with DAT files. Do you want to download them now? Hit yes. And it's going to take a bit because that's a get it from the internet. All right. So it's done. Now it says insert the disk. The disk is already in. So I'm going to hit A. It's going to initialize and then you should see it come up with a loading bar. So this is going to take a bit. And once it's done, we will come back. All right, so the clean rib has finished. We're gonna go ahead and hit A to continue. And we're just gonna just exit out of this. All right, so what we're gonna do now, so I'm gonna take the disc out. We are going to also take the USB out and put the USB into our computer. So, let's switch back to the computer. And as you can see, this is all the stuff that it put on our USB. So the only thing we really need is this ISO. So these two things we can just get rid of. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to move this into our games folder. So move it into games. Let's make a new folder here. We're going to call it Super Mario Sunshine. We're going to rename this to game.iso and we're going to move it into Sunshine. And now we should be able to eject it. we're going to go back to the Wii, put the USB back in. All right, so now we're going to go back into USB loader GX now that we have our USB ready with the game, and we're going to see what it can do. So it's going to try and initialize the USB right here. And it worked, so we're good. And there is the game. Now, my recording kind of messed up, so I've already kind of done this once, but if you come up here, it'll be selected like this whenever you guys see it, but you'll see the game. Um, take off that, just do the Wii games and GameCube games. I'm using my GameCube controller right now, analog stick and A button to just do this. So there it is. And now the next thing we want to check before trying to run the game is go into the settings, go into sound make sure game sound mode is on either sound plus quiet or sound plus bgm for background music um, loop sound is what it's going to be default set to and that is annoying because it just keeps playing the music from like the game menu thing that you're going to see in a second over and over again when you're trying to uh, mess with the settings and it can get annoying so i usually do sound plus quiet and the next thing is custom pass and you want to make sure that the devolution loader is on the SD apps GC Devo. So you can just click on this with A. This is to go back a folder right here. Um, go onto the SD card, go to apps, GC Devo, hit OK. It'll say it changed the path. And make sure Nintendo is on the same thing, SD apps, Nintendo. That way it'll know what to forward to. So now we can click on the game.
you can see it played that little thing. It would keep replaying that if we didn't ch change that sound setting. So now we can go into the setting of the game itself. Like we can do this per game, get a game load, and normally it'd be on use global. And the global setting we have right now is for Nintendo. Like it would normally boot into Nintendo. But I'm going to show you guys how to do devolution because that's the one that's weird. With Nintendo, I would just hit it and it would just go. It would just boom, work, done. Devolution, though, requires you to have the disk, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're just going to click Devolution and keep everything else global for now. Hit Save. Okay, cool, great. Hit B to go back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Start. It's going to try to load the game, and then Devolution is going to say, hey, I need the disk, and I'm going to show you what the Wii does when it wants the disk. So uh, we're going to hit Start, and it's going to say, please wait. And then I'm going to switch over to my IRL webcam, and I'll uh, show you what's up. So, let's go to the webcam, and right now there's the Wii on the ground, and it starts flashing with two flashes, and it'll just keep doing this forever until you put in the disc. And this is the part where you have to have the actual disc that you ripped with CleanRip. So, here's the one we used, we're going to get that out, put this in, and we're wanting it to flash five times, that means it's verified. If it comes back and it keeps flashing with the two flash thing, that means it didn't work and it's not the right disc. So we're going to wait. Okay, there's the five flashes. Wait for it to start up with the LEDs, showing that it's running. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take out the disc now. So there it is. And as you can see on the screen here, we've got a game. So it's setting progressive scan mode. No disc in. Playing from the USB. So I'm going to switch back now to the Wii. See, we've got a game. Super Mario Sunshine. Now, if I wanted to get out of this, if I hit reset, it's just going to reset the game on the Wii. But if I hit the power button like this, it'll actually take us back to the homebrew menu. Alright, so now we're going to try and load the game inside of Nintendo. But before we do that, we want to check and make sure auto boot is enabled. So, go into USB Loader GX, go to Loader Settings, scroll down until you find not the first set of Nintendo settings, but the second set right here. And then auto boot. Make sure that's turned on. What that'll do is instead of it taking you to the Nintendo menu, it'll just boot the game straight up from Nintendo. So, settings. Make it use Nintendo. Hit start. And we should see it boot straight into Sunshine. And there it is. Now one cool thing about Nintendo is it actually has some controller hotkeys. So if you want to uh, restart, you can hold down. If you want to restart, you can hold down R, Z, and start. And that'll restart the game. Or you can hold down R, Z, B, and down, and it'll reset the Wii. Just like this. Now I'm going to show you guys just Nintendo by itself. And show you what it kind of looks like in case you want to use it for any reason. So if we go into to Nintendo. And you can actually update this yourself, but it's got the most updated version. You can choose where the games are. It's on USB. And you can see the games. So this will boot the disk if there's a, you know, 
a disc in the drive, or you can just choose the game. Um, there's also like a bunch of settings if you hit B. Um, this will, you know, force progressive, widescreen, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, memory card emulation, all that fun stuff. And if you hit X, it'll actually update uh, Nintendo for you if you're connected to the internet. But we can click on Sunshine here. And this is the thing you don't see in USB Loader GX, but this is what it's doing. And there you go. So guys, I hope this tutorial has helped you. And I uh, hope you see that it's not super scary to soft mod. It's actually pretty easy. So uh, have fun, enjoy your games, and uh, I will uh, catch you in the next video.